When a society is gripped by genocidal mania, genocidal thoughts, claims, narrative statements become normalised. What a society free of such genocidal mania would seem extreme, dangerous, beyond the pale, becomes like a background hub. Receive wisdom, something that often isn't even blinked at. This has become the fate of Israeli society, which has become a hothouse of genocidal mania, with the important exceptions of truly courageous Israeli fighters who stand in the great Jewish traditions of peace and justice, who will in time be vindicated by history. Which brings me to an example I'm going to show you involving Elon Levy, who many of you will have seen on your TV screen since the Israeli army acted on the countless explicitly genocidal statements made by Israeli leaders and officials from the very start of this entire hideous episode. Now, Levy has become one of the chief spokespeople of the Israeli state to foreign audiences over the period in which over 36,000 Palestinians have suffered violent deaths at the hands of the Israeli state, over 14,000 of them children in which the population of Gaza, of course, has been starved, deprived of necessities of life, like fresh water and shelter, in which its civilian infrastructure has been razed to the ground, its healthcare system destroyed, almost its entire civilian population displaced. Now, quite what the Israeli state was thinking when it deployed this particular propagandist has never been entirely clear to me. Mark Regev, the former Israeli ambassador to the UK, also frequently on our screens, I get it. Very bright, smooth talker, Kind of just what you need when you're trying to gaslight a population as your state perpetrates unimaginable horror. And it's not, important caveat, that Elon Levy isn't intelligent. Never underestimate your enemies, not least when it comes to sophistry or turning reality on its head. It's just his utter charmlessness, the striking absence of any recognisable sense of humanity, and his, human and, and his inability to disguise what comes across as burning malice to me means, in my view, he's completely counterproductive at doing anything other than mobilising the ever-shrinking number of extremists prepared to cheer on one of the great atrocities of our age. Now, you can see that from the polling in the United Kingdom, despite most of the media complicit in the dehumanisation of the Palestinian people, refusing to show the scale of the crime committed against Gaza and repeatedly defer deferring to Israeli claims. Now, a new YouGov poll shows, when asked... Who do you most sympathise with? 28% say the Palestinians, that's for British voters, up seven points since November, compared to 16% for the Israelis, down two points, with 22% saying both sides equally, and another 34% saying don't know. So a very sizable shift in sympathy towards the Palestinian people. Now, I apologise for what I'm going to do here, but I'm going to have to ask you to listen to Elon Levy in conversation with Enat Wilf, a former Israeli Labour politician. Now, some of you I know will go, is that really necessary? I think it is. Without analysing the statements of Israeli officials, South Africa would never have succeeded in putting Israel on trial for genocide at the International Court of Justice. Mm -hmm. Now, here we have a Palestinian Authority Prime Minister Mohammed Steyer, beginning of December, saying, Hamas cannot be eliminated because it exists everywhere and is part of the Palestinian political fabric. Wes, explain that to me. Hamas doesn't represent the Palestinians. That's my favorite these days. Go on. So my favorite West Plaining moment these days is the general Hamas doesn't represent the Palestinians. Which we've heard from many Western leaders. Oh, yes. It's not true? Absolutely. And they here, they tell you, Hamas represents us. We love them. We love what they do. And did. these are their rivals. This is the Fatah oh, party. This is their rivals. Are... Any notion that in that sense they are moderate. And not... They say they are part of us. They are who they are. They represent our deepest ethos, our deepest identity. But the West would like to tell a story that Hamas is a bunch of aliens that took over mm. uh, just a peace-loving strip that was minding its own business. Even and they though the Palestinians them. themselves in poll after poll are saying, actually, we think the October 7 massacre was legitimate, we think it was justified, we think strategically it was the correct decision. We keep hearing this message that Hamas doesn't represent the Palestinians. What is getting lost in translation here? Well, that's exactly the nature of West Planning. Nothing gets lost in translation. Again, to the credit of Palestinians, they're very clear. They make it clear that Hamas represents their deepest desires, their deepest ethos. Hamas is merely the most brutal, successful executor of the Palestinian vision of no Jewish state. They're not some 
alien element that infiltrated Palestinian society and hijacked it. And why then do we have that narrative that says the Hamas does not represent the Palestinians? Why, what, why would people say that when the Palestinians come along and say, actually, they do? Yes. Uh, so here I have to go from the innocent to the sinister. The innocent explanation is the neocolonial one that Westerners... That's the innocent that's explanation. The innocent. Okay, I want to hear what the sinister one is. <laughs> the sinister one is that they actually participate in the same desire and they just want to give it a mask of respectability. Uh, Which, that... of course, we should state is definitely not the way that our firm allies who have been making that have been saying. Yes, so, uh, but that's where it goes from. And, and also, I, I think there's... As the same with from the river to the sea, all that, there's a desire to run away from the implications. Mm. Because if Hamas represents the Palestinians, then the job ahead of us is much, much, much harder than, again, removing the settlements, ending the occupations. If, even if those are logistically challenging issues, they're at least simple. If all the Palestinians are is a people seeking freedom, ending the occupation, annoyed by settlement, then the solution is clear. Just finish these things. But if that's not what is going exactly. on Exactly. Yeah? If, if they are truly committed, as they have been for the last century, that there will be no sovereign Jews between the river and the sea, then what needs to be done is the very transformation of who they are, their deepest identity, their ideology, that and that's a already challenge. a much bigger policy challenge. This, in my view, is an extremely useful insight into the genocidal mentality being nurtured by the Israeli state. Now, Ilya Levy, an official spokesperson of the Israeli state, chose to publish this clip in the midst of the mass destruction of Gaza and the mass slaughter of its people. When the Israeli state, for whom, again, must emphasize, Levy is an official spokesperson, is on trial at the highest court on earth for genocide. Listen to how they talk about the Palestinians. They're not talking about a political movement or an authority of some sort, quite the opposite. The function of this clip is to talk about the Palestinians as a people. Now, both of these people are committed to the total destruction of Hamas as they see it. And yet, what demarcation do they offer in this clip between Palestinians as a people and Hamas? Instead, they present Palestinians themselves as portraying Hamas as representing their deepest desires and ethos. Now, for Western audiences, Israel's propagandists like Elon Levy claim the state of Israel does not target innocent civilians. Indeed, to quote him directly on the 15th of February when discussing Israel's destruction of Nasser Hospital before it was rendered non-functional by this onslaught, we seek no harm to innocent civilians. But as this clip underlines, the Israeli state doesn't really believe there is any such thing as an innocent Palestinian, with perhaps few exceptions. They think virtually all Palestinians are de facto Hamas. That includes, as per this clip, Hamas's rivals in the West Bank, Fatah. So when Israeli propagandists claim the state doesn't target innocent civilians, on their own terms, they're being honest. They just don't really think innocent Palestinian civilians exist. Now, this should have been obvious from the very start. Based on the extremely public pronouncements of Israeli leaders and officials, it was President Isaac Herzog who declared at the start... It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. This rhetoric about civilians not aware, not involved, it's not true. Yov Gallant, defence minister, was clearly referring to Gaza's people, not Hamas, when he called them human animals after he ordered a total siege on the civilian population. It was in any case underlined by the Israeli army coordinator of the occupied territories, who, subsequent to that, publicly declared, Hamas became ISIS and the citizens of Gaza are celebrating instead of being horrified. Human animals are dealt with accordingly. Israel has imposed a total blockade on Gaza. No electricity, no water, just damage. You wanted hell, you will get hell. There's no room, is there, for ambiguity there. Now, it was underlined by Israeli ministers calling the civilian populations of both Gaza and the West Bank Nazis. Of course, Nazis, quite rightly, are understood to be fair game. If you're calling civilian populations Nazis... I don't really need to unpack that, do I? As well as declaring, for example, and I'm a direct quote here, there is no such thing as uninvolved civilians in Gaza. That's from a minister who suggested nuking Gaza. Now, it was clear from a segment on Israeli news last week in which Rami Igra, an ex-Mossad senior official, declared there were no uninvolved civilians over the age of four in Gaza. 
That's not an exaggeration, by the way, and there's been many of these such examples on Israeli television. Now, a US doctor who went to Gaza reported receiving dead Palestinian children aged five to eight in a recently published, just published article in the Los Angeles Times, these Palestinian children with sniper shots to their heads. That should be seen in the context, for example, of that TV clip. Now, the claim Palestinians are somehow inherently Hamas, or the attempt to destroy any demarcation between the Palestinian people and, the ha and Hamas is just a obscene lie. It's been used to justify the terrible fate which has been imposed on the Palestinian people, including the Israeli state running amok in the West Bank. But crucially, it's also about stripping context, because there's no doubt that Hamas has a significant following amongst the Palestinian people. Why? Well, what really happened is a secular movement, Fatah, put down its arms and accepted a two-state solution. Israel responded by expanding settlements in the West Bank, deploying rampant and often lethal state violence against its population. Indeed, for example, in the 15 years before the 7th of October uh, 2023, 96% uh, of those killed were Palestinian. In the year, last year, the whole year before 7th of October, around 240 Palestinians, dozens of them children, were killed in that year before 7th of October alone. That's an example of the state terrorism which the Palestinian people have been subjected to as well as generally, of course, deepening on the part of Israel its policy of apartheid. Now, the much trumpeted Israeli withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, which in any case, thanks to the siege, left it under occupation as per international law, had one purpose, to focus on annexing the West Bank to make an independent, viable Palestinian state impossible. That so many Palestinians were driven into the arms of Hamas was precisely because Fatah had nothing to show for its policy of accepting, essentially, Israeli occupation not resisting in any form occupation and putting down arms and was seen increasingly as a corrupt and frankly authoritarian adjunct of the occupation. Now, there was much of the standard gaslighting in this clip, particularly projection, accusing Palestinians of crimes that the Israeli state has committed along the lines of they want to destroy us, says propagandists of a state which has repeatedly violently ethnically cleansed Palestinians en masse, stolen and colonised their land for generations, and in the here and now, de facto wiped Gaza off the face of the earth. But what really matters here, to circle back to the original point, is they are not trying to hide their genocidal mentality. Why speak like this now? What's the purpose of publishing this clip? It's in the context, of course, of growing public horror and disgust at the mass murder of innocent Palestinians. And the point here is to sow doubt in the innocence of those who are being butchered. You could see this phenomenon last week when the Israeli Ministry of Defense released footage of what they said were Hamas terrorists being treated by Red Crescent me medics during the October 7th onslaught at the Erez border crossing. Now again, first thing here, the Red Crescent and the Red Cross movements are obliged to treat whoever is injured, but in any case, this was a lie. The footage didn't show a Palestine Red Crescent ambulance or medics belonging to the Palestine Red Crescent. The uh, ambulance and the medics belong to the military medical service. That is Hamas's own internal medical service for its militants. There's no way the Israeli Ministry of Defense didn't know that. Again, very important. These people aren't stupid. They obviously knew that. So why release this false claim at this point? Because the Israeli state has destroyed Gaza's medical system, all its hospitals, essentially, slaughtered a huge number of Gaza's medics, as well as detaining and torturing them. Indeed, just days before the Ministry of Defense released this lie, it was reported that a Palestine Red Crescent ambulance sent to save six-year-old Palestinian girl Hind Rajab, who'd rung them, pleading for help, in a car, terrified, surrounded by the bodies of her six relatives, three of them children, who'd been slaughtered by the Israeli army. The ambulance was then blown up, its two paramedics butchered after the Red Crescent had coordinated the arrival of the ambulance with the Israeli army. That's the context for them publishing this lie. So to be clear, Israeli leaders, army officers, and soldiers fundamentally lack a belief in the idea of an innocent Palestinian. That is why they have destroyed most of its infrastructure, destroyed its healthcare system, violently sorted so much of its population, including babies, toddlers, and children, and enforced a policy of starvation. Now, some might just go, 
hold on, Owen, you're being hypocritical here. Because you start by talking about genocidal mania in Israeli society. What distinguishes you then between you and, for example, Elon Levy, who is talking about the Palestinian people? Very straightforward. <clears throat> I oppose all forms of violence against Israeli civilians. Now, just because I understand how this settler colonial state, much like settler colonial states throughout history, has radicalised and been consumed by a form of genocidal mania, does not believe, does not make me believe in some form of collective punishment. And I oppose the war crimes that were committed against Israeli civilians on October the 7th. So there's one thing talking about how a society has become radicalised in a certain way. There's another in justifying slaughtering its people, raising it to the ground. And if I then went from the way I just discussed this process in Israeli society and called for the same thing to happen as the people of Gaza have been subjected to, I would quite correctly be understood as a genocidal racist and, well, I'd probably be arrested pretty swiftly, I would imagine. Uh, so I, I, this is, I think, quite fundamental context. And I think this just underlines what is happening in terms of the dynamic within Israeli society because of impunity and the consequences for the people of Gaza, which, of course, these horrific consequences which Elon Levy has paid to rationalise and justify to Western audiences. Now, in that clip, I would know, Elon Levy, he looks pretty smug. I mean, it kind of seems to be his default expression. What's the basis for that? As I say, it's impunity. Clearly not an irrational view that the Israeli state and its champions can essentially get away with anything with no consequences. I increasingly believe that, like many of the politicians he serves, he's going to end up behind bars. That might take 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, but my own view is Israel's impunity is collapsing in real time. Public opinion in Western countries is clearly shifting against Israel, and the scale of the crime that has been committed and is being committed is just too great, too unapologetic, too obvious. And he chose, of course, to be a propagandist for this crime. In the 1948 Genocide Convention, it's very clear that it's not only those who commit genocide who should be punished, but those who are complicit in genocide and those who engage in direct and public incitement to commit genocide. So let's not stop recording what these people did. It matters a lot. Please like and subscribe. Do share this video and listen to this podcast. I'll speak to you soon.